Well, hey guys, what's going on? It's Steph here. I hope you've been well. I know I have, and it's time for another metal detecting relic hunting adventure. In this week's episode, I am back at the virgin cellar hole that I found in April. And some of those videos have actually made recent appearances on my channel because I kind of lost the summer of metal detecting this year. Great reason for it, but we're not gonna go into that right now. If you know, you know. So let me say that coming back to this site was nothing short of phenomenal. I was shocked to find even more coins and some outstanding relics as well. So I hope you enjoyed the video. It's a really good one, guys. And let's hop in. So today, I am back out at a version site that I found back in April, I believe it was. So incredibly overgrown. I don't like filming the first target anymore. I feel like it's always a jinx. <laughs> so this was coming up like a 49, 50, showing up about six inches deep, which was correct. And we have it right here. So button to start the day. <laughs> I love this site. Oh, it never fails to amaze me how many targets are here. Just so, so many. When you get on a truly virgin, virgin, virgin site, it's incredibly exciting. So I don't think there's a pattern on this one. If there is, I'll certainly come back. But otherwise, we'll keep moving. And uh, so excited to be back here. So, so excited. It's been just a couple of minutes. And we have another good target here. I'll safely assume that's a button, but I've been surprised out here a few times before. And sure enough, no surprises this time. Another button. I don't see a back mark just yet, so for now, we'll call that 1700s. Let's see if the front has anything to offer, which I do not think it does, but you gotta love it, 250 to 300 year old buttons. I'll dig them all day long. I just stood up from where I dug that last button and here we go again. Sorry for the glare. You kind of see the trace there. Historically out here, 60s signals have been dandy buttons, so could easily be one of those. I'd be really happy with that. Well, not what I was expecting, but really cool, actually. So, got down to it. And look what we have here. We have, whoops, my shovel falling. It's got a brass throat to it. This is some kind of, I would believe, a dinner knife. Although I've never seen one, or I've never dug one that has this little brass throat to it. That's very interesting. I mean, not a display piece, but really cool remnants of the 1700s. Gotta love it. Okay, I dug that knife right there. <laughs> and there we go, yet another signal. It's a good one. Keep our fingers crossed. Believe it or not, this might be a first for this site, which is highly unusual to not find these all over the place. And I went, whoa, when I saw what it was, because it's a massive musket ball. Easily a 69, maybe even larger than that. It's been chewed on by something. I know there's that myth that people used to, quote, bite the bullet. <laughs> to relieve pain or rather take their pain out on something when undergoing surgery, but that is a myth. Um, yeah, seen better days, but it definitely hits something. Maybe even that rock right in front of me. And of course, like I said, certainly chewed on. But great target. We'll keep moving. I don't know if I've really driven home the point. This is not the time of year for this site at all, but I just couldn't wait to get back. Take a look at this one. I think 
I'll safely assume Tom back button, but it'd be really cool if it's something surprising. Always the goal. Well, I did get a surprise. That's always nice. Right here. We have a piece of a shoe buckle frame, and I actually found a piece that matches this uh, from this site a few months ago. So I suspect the whole thing is scattered <laughs> all around this site, but uh, very, very cool. This is the same site where I also found a complete open work shoe buckle that I had restored. Um, so if you haven't seen that video, I'm going to put that in the upper right hand section of the screen right now. You guys should definitely watch that. One of my better videos for sure. If you love colonial relic hunting, you want to watch it. So anyway, I guess we'll be on the hunt for more and more of these pieces. Maybe I can have that restored if I find all the pieces. That would be cool. But anyway, we'll keep moving. It's so thick in here, I can barely even stand up straight. In fact, I'm not craning under a branch right now. Anyway, just got another target. Let's get it out of the ground. I don't even know what this is yet, and I'm already excited. And I'm already nervous that I scratched it because I had to get the edge digger out to work through all of these roots. But I just popped this out, and it's not a button, and I truly don't know what it is. Oh, the suspense. The suspense. What on earth? Is this a massive watch winder? Wow, I said that really funny. <laughs> it could be, yeah. I think I got it right there, just there on the edge. Just there. What is this? Seriously, I don't know what this is. Huh. Very interesting. Let me brush this off a little bit. I'm so glad that I barely grazed it, considering how much I had to chop at it. Anyway, I will brush this off and come back, but something pretty unique, and at first blush, I really don't know. All right. Brought this out into the sun to try to get a better look at it. Still, the only thing I can think of is a massive watch winding key but I really don't know I mean it's not ornate uh, it's pretty corroded there's patina that's kind of sort of coming off so usually if there was a massive watch winder of this era there would be some kind of design in the center but I'm not seeing that so this is genuinely a mystery item that I need help with this is a late 18th century site so late 1700s and the only thing I can think of is watch winder. If you guys have a different idea, considering the age of this piece, please let me know. But I'm very interested and I love finding things where I don't have a clue what they are, but I can tell that they're old. <laughs> Gives me some research opportunities and it's just, it makes the day a bit more interesting. So cool piece, whatever it might be, I'll call it a watch winder for now. But again, if you know, let me know really small low conductor next to that presumed watch winder. I mean, look at the disturbed dirt. <laughs> this site's nuts. Eh, we'll make it fun. We'll keep guessing the signals. I'll go with a teeny tiny tom back button. Why not? <laughs> and there you have it. It was probably three or four inches in the ground. It did sound small, so sometimes that'll throw a deeper looking reading than what it actually is. And it is a tom back button. <laughs> I actually was not sure yet if it was tom back. Can't see if there's a design. I'll come back if there is. I do feel a shank. So that is very encouraging. It's awesome. Let's see if we can try to get a pattern off of this. We'll just will it to be so, guys. <laughs> we'll will it so. Um, no, I don't see one. If there is, I'll come back, but otherwise, we'll keep moving on. This site is just crazy. Here we go again. I just left this little area right here. That's where I was finding a couple of buttons, that potential watch winder, and I was just <laughs> really having a problem trying to swing in there. So I came out to a bit of an open area. 
And here we go. Let's see what this one is. Well, 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 what do you know? We've got more roundness right there. Haven't looked at it yet. Oh, wow, look at that. Silver washed, if I can get out of the, the shade here. Oh, what a beautiful button. Let's see if we have a shank still. These people were very fancy, very, very fancy. Fancy buttons and buckles out here. And, yep, beautiful shank, nice patina underneath there. That's awesome, that deserves to spray down. And take a look at that. Shining up like the day it was lost. That is just a thing of beauty to me. And we did have a bit of a back mark here, so this could actually date into the early 1800s, but I'm going to go with like 1790 to 1820, somewhere in that arena. Wow. Just imagine an entire coat or any kind of garment with buttons like this. We don't wear anything like that anymore. <laughs> That's so cool. We'll keep going. This signal has me cautiously optimistic. Let's hope that's something old and excellent. Whew, it is not what I expected it to be. I know you guys are probably thinking, ooh, high reading, coin, but to me it sounded larger. No. It's a coin. I fondled it for just a second to make sure that's what it was. Thickness-wise, 99% sure that's what we've got there. It's an old copper coin. What do we have? Oh, wow. I can see details popping through. That's going to be a draped bust. And it looks like it's going to be in reasonable condition, too. You can see Lady Liberty facing right. And then the reverse. Oh, my God, is this hold? Yes! It so is. Oh, that's so awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Let me clean this up, and then I'll get in the sunlight. <laughs> what a day. So awesome. And there we have it. There was actually still some thread coming through here or some wool. I did manage to take pictures of it, but then when I picked it up off of this rock, it went bye-bye. So I'll put those pictures on the screen right now. You're not going to be able to see the reverse very well, but you will see the thread going through it. That is an absurdly massive hole <laughs> for a hold coin. Normally they wouldn't do that. You know, you want to keep all the material there so that it's still worth one cent. It looks like the date is going to be 1800, right on the nose. Decent details, there's not a whole lot I can do to improve the look of this coin, so I am going to, for once, for once, just leave it the heck alone, seal it up and preserve it as it is. The hole is really what makes it. It's just, <laughs> that's a massive hole. Um, I barely even touch the reverse because it's just caked on there, so. We will probably remove the dirt, at least, once I get home, but that is awesome. I love how unique it is. I love hold coins and old coins. <laughs> well over 200 years old. Someone strung it onto clothing, hoping not to lose it, and, well, they lost it. Good for me, bad for them, but excellent find. Let's keep going. So I have finally found an area out here where I'm digging tons of 22 bullets and 22 casings. This was ringing up the same, it sounded a little bit deeper, so I should have known better, but I didn't. And I just pulled out something very, very old. It is just the back of a really early two-piece button. This would have accepted a pewter face, and supposedly these predate blowhole buttons, which are also early two-piece buttons, but they have two holes in the back to vent out the gases that used to build up in the manufacturing process. Oh wow, that's even a drilled shank. Wow. 
very, very, very early piece. I would say late 1600s, maybe up to as late as 1750, but I would lean on the earlier side of that. Great find. I'll recheck the hole for the top. They are usually not in the hole, although I have found that once before, so you never know. I'll recheck. If it's there, I'll come back with this. If not, we'll move on. Kind of a crummy signal, but still worth filming and digging up, just in case it's something decent. Usually when it starts slipping up into the upper fares limits like that, it's just a big piece of iron, but maybe it's interesting iron, or maybe it's not iron at all. We'll see. I can't express to you how glad I am that I filmed that signal, because it's really important for those of you in the Manticore to understand that you need to investigate those complex targets. This is the first piece that came out. Big, nondescript chunk of iron. Uh, probably part of a cooking vessel or something like that. Put it in the pouch, swung over again. And there she lay. Seriously. These are in the same hole. That's why it threw a weird trace and a weird signal. Big, beautiful dandy button. I'd love another George Washington. I seriously haven't looked at the front. It could be. <laughs> with the age of this site. Or maybe it'll match one that I've dug here before, which would be almost as cool. <laughs> Let me clean that up a bit. Usually at first blush when the uh, dandy buttons come out of this particular site, they're really caked on. You can't see the pattern, but typically they do have a pattern out here. So let me take a look at that and I'll come right back. Well, there you have it. I can't make out what this is yet. It's some funky design. It definitely has a pattern, but these dandies from this site have cleaned up one of two ways, either really nice or really lousy. This might fall into the latter category. I don't know. I won't really know until I get home and I can spend much more time on this, but still has that nice shank. Yeah, so for me, that's in perfect condition. I'm very, very happy with that. And I still can't believe it was in the hole with that massive chunk of iron. That's why it threw such a funky signal. You got to dig it all, guys. Anyway, I'm going to keep going for a little while longer. We'll see if we can squeak out a few more targets. But if not, that would be a nice note to end on. We'll see what happens. Well, through the tall grass, I still managed to hear this signal. Time to dig it up. This rang up surprisingly low for what it looks like. Good eight or nine inches down. We have a thin edge. I fondled it for just a second. I think it's a dandy button. Again. Again, again. Yeah, it's the shank side. And come on, give me a pattern. Ooh, holy crap. Look at all that silver. That's beautiful. That's absolutely gorgeous. Oh my God, let me clean that up. That's fantastic. Took me a minute to find some sunlight. <laughs> the shadows are getting longer. Take a look at this thing. Look at that pattern, that is so cool. That is just so cool. I can't really clean it any further than this. Um, even though there's that a lot of verdigris on this, I don't think I can clean it any further or I'm gonna completely lose the silver wash or gold plating that's left on here. But that is so stellar. Looks beautiful just the way it is. Frankly, I don't wanna clean it. <laughs> that is just awesome. And now I am really, truly working my way out of here. So unless I find something fantastic, I'll just cut to the outro right now. I'm hiking out, guys. I'm trying to get out of here. I didn't film this signal. It was an inch in the ground, coming up about a 71. I don't know what the heck I was thinking. I should have filmed it. I mean, it was actually, no, it was in this topsoil. I just knocked it over here. I felt the thickness. We have more coinage. <laughs> Are you kidding? 
All right, you know what? Let me get in the sun. Let me stand up. Hang on. Just gives us a better idea so that we can look at this together. If I could find some sun, that'd be helpful. There we go. Sort of. <laughs> All right, what are you going to be? So shallow in the ground. I don't even know if it'll have details left. Come on, show yourself, please. I don't know yet, truly. I can't. I can't even make heads or tails of it, literally. Um, oh wait, nope. There's Britannia. So it flipped like that, and it looks like we have a right-facing bust. Is this a KG three? I never find those. You know what? Let me not. <laughs> Let's not jump to conclusions. I can't believe this. I already took a photo of everything I found today. I mean, that's how done I was with today because I figured I already have enough footage for a video. Good to go. And, uh, you know, the more it dries out, the more I'm thinking maybe it's a Connecticut. It looks like it might be facing the left. I don't know. Let me, uh, <laughs> it's ridiculous. An inch in the ground. Ugh. God, if I haven't learned my lesson by now, I just swear to God, I'm never going to learn it. <laughs> Let me have another minute to take a look at this, and I'll be back. But, oh my God, what a sight. Well, it has been a minute, and I really can't get this clean in the field. I'm leaning Connecticut. It almost looks like it says L-I-B over here for Etlib. Um... Yeah, I think I see a D over here for Indy, and an Etlib would be over there. And for this site, that would make sense. So there is definitely a left-facing bust where this dirt's coming off. You can see the tip of his nose right there. 99% sure that's going to be a Connecticut copper. <laughs> oh, I don't think it's going to clean up well at all, but we'll see what happens. I mean, that's a pretty thick layer of crud, um, and I just can't get it off, nor am I willing to destroy this coin for the sake of the video. So if it cleans up all right... I'll put a cleaned up version on the screen. If not, I will certainly have the non-dug version up by now. Yeah, it looks like I see the CO coming through. Oh, that's awesome. What a fantastic day. I think I might turn my machine off just so that I can <laughs> stay away from the temptation of getting even more targets because I'd love to come back here and film more videos. And I don't have time to do that today, so fantastic way to actually truly 100% end the day on now <laughs> and we'll get out of here incredible all right guys well that's gonna do it for this week I really hope you've enjoyed the episode and if you have but you haven't already done so please consider hitting that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss any uploads from me in the future it means so much to me when you subscribe because it helps this channel grow reach more people, and of course, it encourages me to continue making these videos for you. So with that, I'm going to get out of here, guys, and we'll see you next week.